Welcome, welcome, everybody. Another build video for you today. Today we are building the Stellar 65 from Space Cables, Space Holdings, Space KBD, Space. Uh, the Stellar 65 is a 65%, hence the name, uh, entry level stacked acrylic mechanical keyboard. Um, I'm immediately thinking back to my ID80 video where I said RGB is not really for me uh, because this thing has all of the RGB. Um, it's got um, underglow on the keys uh, and or backlighting on the keys uh, and underglow on the PCB. So to match with that, I've got uh, Zeal PC Telios switches with those crystal clear housings to let the RGB shine through. And not that it really matters, because uh, they don't really get the way of anything, but I've also got clear Duroc V2 stabilizers with the Holy Mod applied to them. Um, both are lubed with Crytox 205 grade zero. I've also got Desky's black switch films on here and lubed the springs with Crytox 105. For keycaps, we will be putting on um, GMK finer things to match the uh, stems on here. And that's, that's really the only reason. Um, <laughs> so let's uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, this is um, stacked acrylic, as I mentioned, very similar to the um, AV3 that I just recently built. No steel plates or anything on this though, so a little less uh, delicate to build with, just, just acrylic. So we've got our case, we have got our legs here, we have got our Yankar, Yankar, I'm so sorry, I'm just gonna hold their name up. Uh, PCB, it is solder only, no hot swap option for this one. So we're gonna be doing a bit of soldering today. I have a camera mount over my solder station next to me now. Um, so I'll, I'll honestly probably just time lapse through it. I don't have anything groundbreaking to say about soldering, but you'll actually get to watch it this time. So there's that. And we've got stickers, which are always fun. And we've got our hardware. This is the main hardware that gets you the eight degree typing angle which is the default. They also have another set that lets you go to a six degree typing angle, which honestly I might switch to. A lot of the keyboards I use are closer to six than eight, but I'm happy to try both. I like that they include that. And then on the back side of the Stellar 65 hardware bag is a QR code with a link to uh, Alex Otos's 60 second, uh, 65 second build guide. Um, so just scan that QR code with your phone, takes you right to it. I'll also have a link in the description. So if you don't want to watch me bumble on for I don't know, probably an hour, we'll see at the end of this video. Uh, building this thing, you can get it done in 60 seconds. Why not? So, there we go. A uh, pretty easy parts selection here. Uh, nothing crazy, nothing exotic. So we're gonna keep those out. Get this guy out of the way. So first things first is going to be a whole bunch of paper peeling. <laughs> also much like the, uh, the AV3 video. Uh, we peel all the paper off of these and off of these. So I'm just going to start with a huge time lapse doing all of the peeling. There's nothing special here. It's peeling paper off of acrylic, so nothing crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to start with that quick time lapse here and I will be right back with you. So unlike the uh, the AV3, just for point of reference here, uh, both sides of the acrylic on the Stellar are frosted, and then the edges are shined through. So any of the direct light coming out the bottom of the PCB and then out the bottom of the case is gonna be really nicely diffused. Uh, and then just by virtue of it kind of being um, linearized, the light coming out the sides is really nicely diffused as well. Frosted acrylic, what a cool material. You can see it really well there with my blurring my hand there. Very cool. Love this branding. This is awesome.
All right. There is all of our peeling done. So now the official guide uh, recommends prepping the PCB next, but I'm actually going to start with um, just getting the base of the case ready. Uh, so that when the PCB is ready, it, it drops right in. So uh, these three layers here. So it, the Stellar, I have just completely bungled that picking it up, is kind of rounded. Uh, when it is correctly stacked, so it's really hard to get the layers in the wrong order because it won't be a nice smooth curve around the outside then. Um, so these three layers here are facade layers. They go on the top, so we can ignore these for the moment. These two layers are the ones that get married to the PCB. So we'll set those aside for the moment. And here is our base. So we have the uh, little bits of paper, here we go. Um, we have the very base layer that all the standoffs initially screw into. Uh, and then these layers and every other layer like them actually have a hexagonal hole instead of a round hole. That is tricky at best to see against my very pale skin. Um, but these are hexagonal. Uh, the very bottom layer and the very top layer have round holes. Um, yeah, yeah. So what you wanna do here, let's get our hardware out. The standard hardware baggie comes with uh, two lengths of screws, your standoffs, uh, and an Allen key and bump-ons for the feet. Um, the longer standoffs, of which there are supposed to be eight, which there are, fantastic, and the shorter of which there are three. Um, so the longer ones make up the case, the shorter ones make up the foot, and same with the screws. The shorter screws, of which you need at least six, I've got five, six, seven of those, fantastic, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Awesome, so one extra of each, that's always nice. Um, of these screws hold together the case, this holds together the feet. So the way the official build guide recommends doing this, um, and, and I, I agree with, uh, is holding, so standing up your plate here, however you wanna do this, I just need to do it so the camera can see. Um, press your screw through the bottom so that it's protruding and you're kind of holding it with your finger uh, and then spin these into place, which I largely agree with. But what I recommend is leaving them just a little loose, just so it's a little, little wiggly there. The reason being is this hex standoff needs to be turned just right to align with the hexagonal holes in the other layers. So if you turn this completely tight, your hexes might not all be correct. So if you leave them just a little loose, then you can put on your first couple layers and come back into the screwdriver and tighten the screw up um, so that your hexes are all uh, clocked correctly. Um, and then you can come back and, and get everything kind of locked into place. So show you that again. Screw through the back. Twist on the standoff. And then just back it off just a little bit so it can freely spin. Um, and then for the foot, it's just the exact opposite of that. Um, you go through the top of this plate and lightly screw on those standoffs. So uh, that is pretty much all you're doing. I'm gonna time lapse through the rest of this and be right back with you. Okay, so with those in place, I'm gonna start with the foot here. So as you can see, maybe, you know, actually, um, I just need a darkly colored object to put behind one of these. So as you can see there, there you go. It's way better than my pale hand. Uh, you can see the hexagon shape. Um, so you need all of your standoffs here. I'll try to digitally zoom in and post, although that may accomplish nothing. These are quite small. Um, you need them all clocked correctly. So you can just, since we didn't tighten them down all the way, you can just lightly twist them uh, with your fingers. And if you do that correctly, there you go. Your layers just fall into place. And then once you've got the first layer on, it's gonna hold uh, the standoffs in proper orientation. 
and get you going. Let's make sure they all line up here. Interesting, it's almost like the whole spacing is wrong. Fascinating. Let's try flipping it over. Huh. It definitely seems like one of my foot layers here is miscut. Um, you can see a little, oh, let's read that. You can see a little, oh no, you can't, it's so clear. <laughs> uh, this is bowing up between these two standoffs. So you actually see the standoffs are tilted outwards from each other. Isn't that interesting? I'm gonna try turning it around. That's really interesting, this is laser cut. I wonder how uh, that would happen. You know what, it's better the other way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with that. I have something underneath one of these layers now. <laughs> I can see it. There it is. Get out of there. Get out of there, little piece of something. Interesting. Uh, before I post this, I will do a little research, uh, aka look at their Discord, uh, and see if they've mentioned that or if that's just me. That is. Yeah, those are still flared out a little bit. Isn't that interesting? Well, I wonder why that is. Anywho. Oh, then this layer fits over top nicely. Oh, no, but now see this end one is all out of whack. Well, isn't that interesting? Okay, well, let's look at this. So I got a lot of space over here and very little over here. It's almost like this piece got misaligned uh, when it was being cut. All my standoffs are vertical there. Let me just do an experiment here. Put this one on by itself. Oh yeah, one of these holes is totally uh, too far down the piece of acrylic. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yep, and if I flip it over, the same thing happens. Isn't that interesting? Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the shorter standoffs and we are going to skip this piece of the foot so the foot won't quite be stacked as intended um, it'll have a big jump between layers but that'll at least allow us to uh, finish the build. And honestly, that's the foot height I may have ended up with anyway. Um, and as I was saying, I will do some research into this. And now since I know for a fact there's an issue, uh, I will actually contact Space Cables um, and I will put on screen if something came of that contact uh, or if it's like a known thing and I just didn't pay attention after the drop. I have this really nasty habit of like being in a Discord for a product and then the product comes out, I kind of ghost the Discord a little bit. And it's not like I mean to, but it's it's hard to keep up with all of them. Um, and I feel badly about that. But so uh, all that to say, I may just have missed in the Discord that they're like, hey, guys, uh, if your foot was miscut, let us know. We discovered, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so I will put on screen uh, if anything comes of contacting them. Oh yeah, these these layers just fall right into place. Yeah. Although interesting, now these standoffs. Oh no, the standoffs are not too tall. They're just not tightened down all the way. Come on, Ian. You're using a tactic you mentioned. Although turning that does oh pff. come on Ian. Turning that does nothing because it's a hex. <laughs> so you use a a 1.5 millimeter hex key. These are M2 uh screws on this. Yeah. Oh. oh boy. Get it together, Ian. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Lightly tighten those into place. Now with the Phillips head, you dummy. And then last layer. And then we use the remainder of our yeah. foot screws. Yeah. 
And so I tightened it down, backed it off just a little bit so that the piece can wiggle into place. These are uh, countersunk head screws. So they flare just a little bit at the head. So as that cone of the bottom of the head presses into the hole in the acrylic, it'll kind of uh, align everything. go there we go and there we go cool uh, now this is ultimately the actual bottom foot regardless so I'm gonna throw my bump ons on here try and get them kind of lined up with the rounded end of the bottom foot layer this frosted acrylic looks absolutely fantastic I was, what well, you clearly saw in the time lapse, I was just dry stacking the um, the layers of the, uh, oh boy, and uh, of the board uh, as I was peeling everything and seeing it kind of come together layer by layer is really cool. The, the stacked layers of frosted acrylic give a really uh, interesting look that I'm not quite sure the uh, camera will capture accurately, but uh, it's, it's quite cool. And then these ones, I'm just kind of gonna go Hmm, do I want to go in line with the screw or 45 from it? In line with the screw, it will fit. It won't go over the edge of the board. So why don't I do that actually? Just because much like the AB3 as well, this is a tiered board. Um, so if you put the feet uh, too far back this way, uh, the front edge of the material actually might crash into the desk first, uh, thus defeating the entire point of having little feats. Let's get scooch that up here so that they're kind of aligned with each other, the screw in the foot. That looks good. Scooch this one just a little bit. That looks good. Okay. Crisis averted. And the feats are definitely the thing touching the base, touching the uh, desk surface rather. Fantastic. So now we're going to do the same thing here. You can see the USB-C cutout. And like I said, these are really easy to tell. If you line these up, one layer is clearly, I guess I'm building stacked acrylic boards. Uh, there we go. One layer is clearly larger than the other. The one closer to my thumb here is larger. So again, it kind of has a curved side profile. So it's really easy to tell uh, what layer goes on first, that being the smaller one. And so, I just kind of want to get all these standoffs clocked correctly. And there we go, cool. So now we know all the standoffs are clocked correctly at the very least. We'll put on another layer here to kind of support everything. There we go. Okay, cool. So now that all these hexes are clocked correctly, uh, now we can flip the board back over. Stacked acrylic layers, yeah, will fall down to the desk, but that doesn't matter because they're still gonna hold everything in the correct clocking. So we're just gonna tighten these down. I'm just going finger tight for the moment. Once I have the whole thing together, um, I'll come back and uh, give these a more thorough tighten down. But right now I'm really just trying to hold them uh, in position. There we go. And there we go, okay. That is tight enough for the moment. We'll hold everything in place. Yeah, even just tightening them, they all turn just a little bit so the layers fit a little more tightly now, so. Really glad that I started with them a little loose and went from there. So there you go, there's your base put together. The next layers on this will be the ones holding the PCB and then the layers on top of that will be the facade layers that create the uh, profile of the case. So that's fantastic, there you go. There's your, your base all put together. A little bit out of order um, from the official build guide, but I don't necessarily mind that. So I'm gonna put these back in the correct hardware bag, extra foot screw. And there's our case screws. Oh, you know what, actually, let me keep the case screws out because we're gonna need those momentarily anyway. And so that would be two, four, six, eight, fantastic. Oh, and I can put the foot, the extra foot pad away. Um, honestly, that extra foot pad might be useful to put in the front center of the case because right now I'm not sure if you can hear that. If I tap the front center of uh, the acrylic, uh, gives enough, um, whereas 
Oh, actually, the back does it too. We'll see once the whole thing is screwed together, long story short, um, if uh, it is stiff enough. If not, I actually might recommend putting this last bump on front and center here, especially because you'll be hitting on the space bar uh, right there. So here we go, pack all those up. So there's our case prepped. Next up is prepping the PCB. So you will notice I am freshly opening the seal of this PCB. What does that mean I need to do? I need to test the freaking PCB. Always. Always, always. Always. Test your PCB. Just do it. Saves you time. Normally I time lapse everything in these videos. No one wants to watch a guy test a PCB. So real quick, I'm just gonna, and the PCB is tested because no one wants to watch anyone do that. So we've got a very happy PCB here. No concerns with that whatsoever. And uh, PCB, first thing first, it's stabilizer time. Well, second thing second. First thing first is test your freaking PCB. Just always do it, costs you nothing. And especially since this is a solder build, uh, finding out after I solder it that something's wrong with the PCB would be heartbreaking. So yeah, God, this thing is just covered in LEDs. It is very, very, very bright. So stabilizers, same as it ever was, nothing special here. Uh, with Duroc stabilizers, one side has that brass insert for a screw. The other edge has a clip to clip in. The clip inside goes into the larger hole in the PCB. The little hooks get under the PCB and then the little bit of the brass insert sticking out goes into the smaller holes. And I am clearly, there we go, doing something wrong. Or these are actually just like really nicely toleranced. And they're actually holding stabs in without screws. Fantastic. So a happy stabilizer looks like that. Nice and flat against the PCB. You can see the plastic clip sticking out on the underside of the PCB. And then the brass insert is pretty much flush with the bottom of the PCB. So there you go. You do that for all of your stabilizers, flip it over, install your screws, and your stabilizers are in. Pretty easy peasy. So I'm going to uh, time lapse through that as it is not interesting. And I will be right back with you. And there we are with our stabilizers mounted. So let's pop some switches in, give them a test before we solder everything up. Again, we are using Zeal PC Telios switches. They are a early favorite of mine in the hobby, though they are very expensive now compared to the alternatives but I already had these. And as I mentioned, their clear housings will almost certainly play nice with the uh, RGB elements of this keyboard. Because if you're gonna go RGB, really go for it. Am I right? Cool, let me grab my keycaps. I absolutely adore this green color that Finder Things uses. In fact, the same teal that the Tiffany Corporation company, whatever, has a, a patent copyright, whatever, a copyright on this color uh, green. But as we in the keyboard hobby know, color copyrights are an immensely complicated issue. Um, so it's just kind of funny to me that uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's literally by design, uh, Tiffany teal. So there you go. Uh, let's uh, let's find out. I'm gonna the recorder for audio is over here, so I'm gonna hold it over here for y'all to listen with me. All right, backspace sounds good. Return sounds great. Right shift is good.
Left shift sounds good. I hear perhaps a little ticking on the space bar. I will um, likely do some tuning there using uh, Minterly's uh, plug the butt method. Um, I have a syringe with a uh, Crytox 205 in it. Oh, actually, why don't I do that right now? Y'all are here for a build video. Let's build this thing. So, the way we do this, this is a 18 gauge blunt nose syringe, and this is Crytox 205 in here. Uh, the long and short of how you do this, I'll leave a link to her video on how you do this in the description. Short version is, hold the stabilizer up with your, I'm not gonna be able to show you this, hold the stabilizer up with your fingers, get your syringe in next to the wire of the stabilizer which is a little tricky with Holy Mod, I'm learning. And pump a little Crytox in there. This is a really great way to add a, uh, air quotes, precision <laughs> uh, amount of Crytox to your staves. much better there you go plug the butt it's a great way to tune stabilizers it is how i tuned stabilizers before i started doing the holy mod and it works uh incredibly well you just need to get a syringe uh, which are actually very easy to get on the internet um just 18 gauge goodbye right shift key uh just 18 gauge uh blunt nose syringe unfortunately with syringes you have to buy like a 20 pack of them i could not find just a single one so i have a lot of syringes in my closet when uh meetups come back that might be something i bring along just to like give out because i don't need like 20 uh syringes so oh that key caps really far back there okay don't scrape it across the floor there we go okay the prodigal son has returned cool so now we need to get these completely out so that we can put our plates in place. And plate time. So these plates are of very, very similar size. The way you can really tell the difference is, and this might be hard to see. So I'm showing you what's called the support plate, which goes on the bottom in this scenario, but you can see how the holes are bigger and it's got this big cutout here. So the one with the big hole in it and the larger holes in general goes on first. And then the one that is floppier and thinner goes on on top of that. So your support plate below and your switch plate on top. Just like that. There we go. And then just like always, pick one corner, put a switch in. There we go, nice affirmative clicks. Pick another corner, put another switch in. That looks like it is in place. I just didn't hear the clicks. Cool. So now that forces the plate into orientation and you are free to snap in the rest of your switches, which I will now do via time lapse.
and there we are with all of our switches. Tilios just look so nice. I wish they weren't so expensive. Um, the support plate will just kind of be hanging out down here. Uh, it is held in place by the uh, the standoffs once you screw everything together. So only the top plate is really rigid at the moment. Uh, and it is now time for soldering. Um, so I'm gonna cut to the other camera mount on the workbench here and we'll get to it. And for the first time, here we are on the soldering side of the workshop. So uh, soldering on the Stellar 65 is uh, dead simple. Uh, there are no layout options on this version of the PCB, not even stepped caps. Um, so literally every single one of your switches just goes into its predetermined spot. Um, and that's that's it. I'm gonna quick do a visual check here, make sure I have two legs for each switch and I didn't have any bent ones sneak past me. I always like to check when I'm putting them in, but you never know. Yep, everything looks great. So fixed layout PCB, easy peasy. Uh, and then we have nice big solder pads on, on all these legs. There's nothing that's real snug or real close, anything like that. It's a very standard um, layout. So I've got my fume extractor fan here. I use the uh, Yihua uh, 937D solder station. Um, I apologize if I said Yihua wrong. Uh, it is Y-I-H-U-A. I will uh, provide a link in the description to it. Uh, and this is a, a homemade fume extractor using a, a Noxua fan and a 3D printed bracket. Um, so that way it's nice and quiet while I'm recording videos um, because off the shelf fume extractors are incredibly loud. So this way you can actually hear me over the dang thing, uh, which is, I believe, helpful for, for video content. Um, so really not a terribly interesting process here. Uh, I'm gonna time lapse through this. It's a very standard solder job. Um, and I will uh, still time lapse it for, for your enjoyment and I will see you on the other side. Okay, we are all soldered up. Uh, before I cut this and move the camera over, I'm once again gonna test this now that the switches are in uh, and check all my LEDs and everything and then we'll move on to final assembly. So if, if, if you see me at the other side next, everything went okay. If there's more soldering footage, something went wrong. Let's find out. Everything tested out fantastically um, with the switches and LEDs. Everything's looking good, so I washed my hands and switched back over, and it's time for it's time for final assembly. How about that? Um, we are going to start with putting on the keycaps. Um, this currently can sit flat on its butt, um, so putting the you know the pressure down and putting keycaps on uh, will be transferring uh, through less layers of acrylic, basically. I'm sure the acrylic case can take the force of putting on keycaps, but since I'm already in this state, I'm just gonna go with it. As I mentioned, we are going to be using GMK Finer Things for this build. Ooh. I'm gonna put the keyboard a little out of frame. Sorry, so the lid stays open. Uh, let me uh, put these on via time-lapse and we'll jump into final assembly. There we are. He's out of the way. That looks fantastic. Already, this is my first time having this nav cluster like this too. I'm excited to try that out. Uh, I just did a couple taps on the space bar while I was putting on caps. It almost feels a little sluggish now. Um, so when you're uh, adding more lube, um, 
via a, a syringe, be careful. It actually already tapping it now, it feels better, which kind of worked out a little bit. Um, and as mentioned in uh, Hamaji's guide on the Holy Mod, um, it, it takes time to break in. So uh, don't take these stabs as, as gospel as they are because they will break in over the course of about a week. Um, my first time using them was in my KBD 67, um, which I haven't used terribly much admittedly. Um, but my second time using them was in the AV3 and I found after about 10 days of using them, they, they broke in really nicely. So um, if you are building with the Holy Mod um, or listening to my stabs as they are now and you're not pleased, give them time, they age. But now, very excitingly, it is time for final assembly. So we need to get our three facade layers off of here and out of the way. And now we get to drop in the part of the keyboard that's the keyboard. So, okay, cool. So you can see the USB is sticking out of the main PCB right by my index finger there, which has super glue on it because I cut myself. Um, there's just a drop in port here. It is completely open uh, on the top. So you can just literally drop this top layer. Uh, well, don't literally drop it, but it, it, it just, oh, wow. Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> I guess almost literally drops, Never mind. Uh, into place, so it's kind of cool. You can kind of see the branding on the PCB right there. That's neat. Um, so there you go, you can kind of see that curve forming where each layer is a little bit bigger than the last. And then we get to drop our facade layers on. I got cocky with the last layers. Of course, these aren't just going to drop in. This is what I get. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Fantastic. And our final layer. Man, that looks cool. That is awesome. Uh, and then we're going to use a hex key, not a freaking Phillips head. Uh, and we are going to lightly screw those in just barely any tension at all just kind of get everything aligned oh my hex key almost actually kind of matches as well i didn't even notice that it was meant to be a, uh, a hex key is provided in the hardware bag if i didn't mention that i just really like my pb swiss uh, allen keys hex keys whatever you will like to call them so doing the corner pattern, and then I'm gonna do a next pattern here. Again, you're just really trying to get the pressure uh, evenly through the different uh, layers and, and mounting points here. But as it is stacked acrylic, you do not want to tighten it too tight. You can totally crack these. Uh, where there are screw holes, you can see the acrylic, it's very thin in those sections. So uh, don't use any more tension than you need, really. So as I mentioned, I was gonna go back and tighten the bottom. Now that I've got the top roughly in place, I'm just gonna go back and using the short end. You can see I got the long end of the key in there. Using the short end, I'm just gonna snug those down just a hair. Oh, yep, got a little creaking there. Don't like that noise. There we go. Cool beans. The super glue is coming off of my fingertip. Of course it is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, now pushing on this. Uh, you know what, it does just tap the desk. When I push down, it is much stiffer as I kind of expected it to be. Um, I will, I'll, I'll add this bottom foot. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that, um, but I'm gonna add uh, the bottom center foot just to keep everything kind of level. But there you have it. That is the Stellar 65 by Space Cables with the GMK finer things on it. So there's that rounded profile I was talking about, how it kind of, well, it's rounded, I guess, um, but via, you know, terracing. So you can see here how crystal clear the edge of that acrylic is. So you can see in here, but then the top and bottom are frosted to help diffuse the RGB. So this thing is really just gonna pour RGB out of it when it's on. And in fact, why don't I kill the film lights here? So a little bit of glow coming from my computer screen. My camera is very mad <laughs> trying to find focus right now. One moment, camera. One moment. That port. Oh, the port actually sticks. Quite proud. There's our underglow. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's so good. 
there you go. That is uh, that is the Stellar 65 all lit up like a Christmas tree. So you can really see it through the sides. The bottom is solid red at the moment. I will probably color these LEDs to match the keycaps. So I'll go with kind of a tealy blue color. But uh, there you go. Look at that. I really can't think of a better note to uh, end on than staring at the Stellar and all of its Stellar glory. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, with the, the build video, I will be appending a sound test to the very end of this for you to listen to. I'll compare uh, the ABS GMK keycaps I've got on it now with some PBT keycaps so you can hear the difference between those two. Um, if you like this video, drop a like. If you have questions, leave a comment for me. Love talking to everyone who watches the videos. And if you want to see more, drop a subscription. It's free and you can unsubscribe the moment you're bored of watching a guy talk about keyboards. So stick around for the sound test and I will see you all next time.